Master crafters and organized warriors, fire giants are ruthless militaristic brutes whose mastery of metalwork is legendary. And today, we're gonna show you how to paint up one of these resin behemoths using the paints found in the Nolzer's Marvelous Pigment series. Now, the paint set does come with a brush on gray primer, but to save us loads of time, because the model is mostly metallic, we gave it a coat of our Color Primer Gunmetal Spray. The rest of the colors that you're gonna need for this tutorial are featured here. You can find these colors in both our Dungeons & Dragons, Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments Monster and Adventurer's Paint sets. Many of these colors have corresponding colors from our War Paints range, which I'll be calling out during the tutorial. Moving right along after priming the model with our Color Primer Gunmetal Spray, we're going to apply a wash all over the armor bits on the model, and that is the majority of the model, in fact. We're gonna apply this in two coats just to really give that gunmetal a rich, dark tone. We're using our Wargamer's Monster Brush as it's a bit larger and has more bristles, but any brush will do here. After the wash has had time to dry, we're going to move on to the dry brush stage. We're dry brushing all of those armor bits just to reinforce some of those highlights like you could see on the chest plate and on these shoulder pads here. This is very simple, just remove as much of the paint from the brush as possible and flick the edges of that brush across the raised areas of the model. Be sure to get all of the raised areas, don't leave anything left behind. With the dry brush complete, we are going to block in all of the cloth on the model using cobalt red. Then we are going to apply brown wash from the D&D paint sets over top of the cobalt red. We're going to hit the areas on top of his knee, the areas on his forearm, as you can see here, and then the cloth bits on the back of the model, like under his shoulders here, under the arms, and of course the back of his pant legs. The washing step will help to reinforce the shadows on the model and help act as a guideline for which areas you will need to highlight in the next step. With the wash dry, we're going back at those raised areas of the folds in his pants and all of the cloth with cobalt red. In this area on his back, we're just gonna focus that highlight towards the raised areas where his shoulder muscles are peeking out from underneath the armor. Then we're gonna move on to a watered down highlight with Cambian Crimson. We're gonna utilize the translucency of this red paint and the water to reinforce some of those highlights in a subtle fashion. We're also going to reinforce some of those highlights on the folds in the cloth on the model. Then we're going to use Rust Monster on the most extreme edges of the model, like the folds of the cloth and the very peak of this shoulder muscle on the back of the model here. I applied the paint basically right out of the bottle, then went back in with a thin down mixture just to blend it back into that Cambian Red. With all of the cloth complete, we're moving on to the skin tones. And I wanted to do something a little bit different here for our fire giant lord. Since this guy lives in lava and mountains, I wanted to give him an almost ashen appearance. So for that, we're using Beholder Purple, and we're just applying a very simple base coat all over the face and the hands of the model, like so. I wanted to give him a more subdued wash, so I mixed a little bit of Abyssal Black and Purple Worm together and watered it down. And we're just going to apply this into the recesses like the eyes and the brow and around the hairline of our Fire Giant. We're going to repeat this process across the hands of the model, ensuring that this mixture flows into the recesses between the fingers. While our wash mixture dries, I'm going to apply the base coats for the hair on the model and Rust Monster, which we used in a previous step. 
I think is the perfect color for a fire giant lord. We're going to apply this all over the hair on the model. We're also going to apply this to his eyebrows and his beard, as you can see on screen. Then we're going to pick out some areas on the base. He's standing on this big lava, molten lava base. So we're finding some little crannies in there, and we're just blocking in with that rust monster inside, almost like a wash, treating this paint as a wash. I'm using it right out of the bottle and then moving it around, letting it find its place inside the nooks and crannies on the base. I'm attempting another subdued wash here, mixing flesh wash and cambium crimson. This gives a nice runny red wash that we're gonna apply all over the lava on the base of the model and also to the hair on our fire giant lord. As you can see here, careful not to get too much of this wash mixture onto the skin tones. We're going right back to Rust Monster again, and we're just picking out some center highlights inside of the lava on the model, as you can see on screen. And then we're gonna use it to apply a light edge highlight to the hair, the eyebrows, and the beard on our fire giant lord. Very simply, just using the edge of the brush to trace that rust monster on there. Finally, we're moving on to Fire New Orange. This is a nice yellowish orange color, and we're just going to reinforce some of those highlights on the lava in the very centermost areas, and the same thing on the facial hair on the model. Just picking out the little raised areas, the bumps and peaks on the model's hair, like his eyebrows here and his hair. We're applying this very sparingly, just focusing it on the outermost peaks and ridges of the model's hair. With the hair and lava complete, we're going to move back to the skin of the model. And for this, we used a mix of Beholder Purple and Orc Skin. We're just lightly applying this all over the most raised areas on the model. Don't worry about being too precise here because we have many more highlights to apply to really pull off the skin tone effect that we're going for here. I'm just using this Beholder Purple and Orc Skin mixture as a placeholder and almost a guideline for where the rest of my highlights will go. Finding the eyelids and the raised areas on the cheekbone and nose as you can see. There's nothing crazy technical about that. These larger models are more forgiving, so we're just gonna block that in, almost as if we were applying a base coat. Now we're moving right to orc skin, focusing this again inside of the previous colors that we applied here. We're moving the color range from that almost alien purple into that ashy gray range with this step. This is really pulling off that fire giant effect that we're going for here. Finally, we're moving to gelatinous blue, which is a nice bright bluish gray color. And we're just applying this to the very most raised areas on the model, on the cheeks, the eyelids, the bridge of the nose, and the very tip of the forehead. You can see that I'm applying this paint very sparingly across the model, just to pull out and push the contrast on the face. With the face, we're moving on to the boots of the model. And for this, we're using Lit Skin, which is 100% color match to Castle Gray from our War Paints range. Next, we're gonna move on to Dwarf and Bronze, and we're just gonna block in all of the areas on the model that we want to have in bronze, like these pieces of armor around his wrist, his shin guards, his waist belts, and his crown. We're also gonna pick out these books or tomes that he has on his shoulder pads. Take your time, be patient here. We're gonna apply this in two light coats just to achieve a very rich base tone, as you can see here on the hammer of our Fire Giant Lord. Now that we've applied two base coats of the Dwarven Bronze, you can see how rich that bronze color really is. We're gonna move on to add a base coat of Skeleton Bone to the handle of our Giant's Hammer. Then we're moving back to our Brown Wash. We're gonna apply this to the areas that we previously painted in Lich Skin, and the handle of the hammer that we painted in Skeleton Bone. Just ensuring to get good, even coverage, make sure that that wash flows into the recesses. With the brown wash dry, we're gonna re-establish the base coats with a quick highlight of Lich Skin, 
and then a more focused highlight of zombie flesh. This is a 100% color match to our necrotic flesh, one of the best selling colors from our war paints range. We're also going to reestablish the base tones on the handle of the hammer with skeleton bone. Very simply, just picking out the most raised areas with the skeleton bone before applying a very fine highlight of lawful white to the edges of this wrapped hammer handle. Going back to the metallic areas on the model, this time we're using cure and gold to pick out some of the emblems on the model, like you can see here on his crown. We're also going to use it to apply a very rough edge highlight to some of the most raised areas on the model. And I'm doing this in a very light dry brush fashion. Again, a very rough highlight here. Now we're gonna wash down all of the gold and brassy areas using flesh wash. You may be asking yourself, why not use strong tone or brown wash? That's because flesh wash actually has a little bit of a red tone to it. And that red tone really helps to bring out the richness in those gold and brassy metallics. We're applying this over all of the brassy and gold areas on the model, ensuring that it doesn't pool in the recesses just to add some realistic depth and shading to these areas on the model, as you can see on the shin armor here. Finally, we're gonna take a little bit of Silver Dragon, and we're just gonna drag the edge of that brush across the most raised areas on both the silver metallics and the gold metallics. This is gonna help make these areas pop a bit more after we've washed them down. It's gonna make all the intricacies to this sculpt on this model stand out from the tabletop. One of the fun things about painting models of this scale is that you can be a little bit looser with your highlights. Obviously on the more defined edges like you can see here on the spikes of the hammer, you wanna be very precise, but on everything else on the model, you can be a little bit looser. It's a little bit more forgiving and it's a lot of fun to paint, especially for beginner painters out there. So we're applying this highlight across both the silver shades of metallics and the golds, really just to make them pop off from the tabletop. Now it's time to head back to the base. For this, we're using Abyssal Black and Dungeon Stone. You'll notice that we are not using a pure black paint for this lava base. That's because we are going to apply a wash of Shadow Wash when we're done basing this in to help really make the details of this sculpt stand out. If we were to apply our shadow wash over top of Abyssal Black, you wouldn't get the same effect. So we're just tracing this paint in, ensuring not to cover up any of the lava that we pre-painted on the model, very simply. Then of course, we're going to apply our shadow wash all over the model, again, being careful not to get that black wash inside of the lava that you see on the base. You can see now that we've blocked everything in on the base that the lava really stands out. It almost looks like real lava from this point of view. Our model is almost complete. All that's left to do is paint in the rim of the base. And we're just gonna take a bizzle black right out of the paint pot and we're gonna paint in the trim and rim of the base very simply. You could paint the trim in any color that you like. I prefer to paint the rims of my bases black because I think it makes the base effects on the model really stand out and it also makes the model stand out a little bit more on the tabletop. Thanks for tuning in to this tutorial. I know it was a bit longer than our usual tutorials, but it is a bigger model. That said, it did only take us a couple hours to get this painted up in studio. We did apply a few more advanced techniques to this model, but being that it's such a large model, it offers a little bit more forgiveness. And this is a great place to test your skills as you're pushing your hobby techniques. Our D&D paint sets were inspired by the monsters, warriors, and heroes on your dungeon party adventures, with colors specifically designed to match the imagery found in your monster manuals. All of these sets come complete with our high quality heavy pigmented paints and an exclusive resin miniature by Gale Force 9. All of these sets are available at your friendly local game store or online. Remember, the magic and miniature painting can be as simple or as advanced as you'd like it to be, but with the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. I hope you enjoyed painting up this fire giant lord with me today. We'll see you next time.